that they will be they will come you know, near the end of time you see he said that a man will go past a grave okay imagine how bad this gets a man will walk past the grave and he will look at the grave and say to the to the dweller in the grave who's six foot down he will he will say you are in a better place than me subhanallah he said near the end of time the one who's speaking the truth will be rejected as a liar and the one who's saying the lie is going to be accepted as the truthful hello fake book and between the second set of signs of the minor signs and the and the major signs imam mahdi is the bridge so when he appears he's going to be the beginning of all the you know all the 10 signs that are about to come and dajjal is going to be the worst of all the 10 signs that that Allah Azza wa Jal would have brought on this earth have we not got an ummah that does not actually read what the quran is actually saying yes or no yes ummiyu la ya'lamun al-kitab right they make themselves illiterate they haven't got the time Bro, they haven't got the time. They've got the time to watch three hours of YouTube. You want to know how the system works, bro? I'll tell you how the system works. Because if you want to know how Dajjal is able to fool so many people, you better start thinking how you are fooled to getting into three hours of YouTube. But no time for the Quran. Wow! Are you serious, man? The question is, has Dajjal already come out? Because you get two different narration you get two different types of narrations and the way the the way the scholars have combined them is that the jal is alive and is already trapped or the jal will be born after 30 years to parents who will not have children but he's going to be a very strange looking human being you will never have seen a greater in size human being than the Jal on this earth. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in Sahih Hadith, from the beginning of time till the last man of the of the of the Qiyamah, there's never going to be a'zamu khalqan, someone who's going to be greater in size as a human being than the Jal. And what happens is before the Jal comes, there's an entire system that that supports the 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 whatever the jazz going to have now i don't know look i don't know whether the technological things that we've got advancements we've got whether that's going to be at the hands of the jail or whether the jail will have other type of powers but it looks like the technological world we're going through the all those devices are going to be the jails there's going to be some serious advancement in science and what he does is he says you believe me as a god if you don't believe in him fine he's gonna cut off your supplies of food grain whatever it is he's gonna completely destroy all your crops that you basically can't grow anything he's gonna have that technology do you know right now that there's a movement to try and only give you you know only give you a seed to grow one things once all right and, and if that is fully fledged system, and if that comes in his hands, and he's got the way to say that you can't have food for the rest of the year. Now you've got a whole year to live. And Sahaba was struck and they said, Messenger of Allah, how do we survive without food for a year? Ah, this is a serious question. Will you seriously say no food for one year? One year. And if you look at the hadith, I said to you, it's one year, two and a half months, the Jal will be around. So are you ready to survive without any food for one year, two and a half months? And the Sahaba said, how do, how do we survive? And the Prophet ﷺ said a beautiful thing, which we need to do a lot right now, guys. This is the only way you're going to survive through the times that we're living in. He said, your food that day will be a tasbih, Tahleel. He said, your food that day is going to be Subhanallah and La ilaha illallah. Your food that day is going to be remembering Allah. The only thing you can do in Dajjal's time is to get somewhere and just hide. You can't confront Dajjal. You can't confront his army. His army is too big, they're too powerful. And you have to just do the Tasbih and Tahleel and hide and just Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect you. You telling me the Muslim Ummah is not having internal fighting right now? Yes or no? Come on. 
Come on guys. <laughs> وَإِذَا خَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ لَا تَسْفِكُونَ دِمَاءَكُمْ Allah said to the Banu Israel, look, I told you, don't shed blood amongst each other. You telling me, look at the Middle East, look at the, look at the Muslim Ummah. We're fighting each other. And Allah said, well this, you know, when Rasulullah said, you will, you will follow exactly the same thing. Because when Dajjal comes out, do you know that there's going to be thousands of ulama of this ummah that will actually follow him? Two categories are mentioned. Ulama, scholars of this religion, of this religion Islam are going to follow him. And women of this religion, in Sahih Ahadith, women in their numbers will follow him. What, what are his powers? What will he do? Well, when he comes out, He's going to reign the earth for 40 days. This is in Sahih Muslim, 40 days. The first day of his 40 days is one whole year. The one day, one 24 hours is going to be 365 days. And the Sahaba were struck, they were amazed. Let's have Allah. One day is going to be one year. And the Prophet then explained. Yes, one, one, he said one day is going to be like one year. The next day is going to be one month. The next day, one week. Then, and then he said after that, the rest of his days are going to be like normal days. If you make your calculation of that, he will be on the earth for one year and two and a half months approximately. But that one day, the first day, my God, what is he going to do? Well, he's going to fly across the whole of the world. And he, you know, Rasulullah says that he will have this donkey that he will fly with. And, he, and Subhanallah, the Prophet says, Ma'ahu kullu lisan. He has every language with him. Every language with him. I just heard, you know, last year or something, uh, the, the Japanese have got this device that you put on your shoulder and you walk around with it in your business, you know, daily activities. And what you do is you speak. And as soon as you speak, this device will translate to whatever language you want. And then they speak and then their one translates to whatever language they want. So Allahu Alam, I don't know if it, if it means that he has some kind of other way of, of talking to people, he has that, but it looks like he might have that device. The next thing that Jal does, he comes to a people and says, I am your Lord. They say, how do you prove that you're, you're our Lord? He says, okay. He says, the rain, I'm going to make it stop. If he wants to make the sun come out because the clouds are, are, are gone, or if he wants to make the sun never shine over it because the clouds are going to be there, okay, he can do that. Now, if you look at modern, modern technology, there, there's cloud seeding that some countries use. You send a jet with certain chemicals into the air and they send these chemicals out and you can create clouds. That is already out. The Jal will, will then tell those people that I'm your Lord, believe me. And people, be, people, you know what? People will be so dumbed down that they're going to believe in him as an actual God. They'll take him as a God. The Jal then, one of his powers is that he's able to cut a man in half and the two pieces fall down to two sides. Because he will say to the man, he say, he say, he will say that, uh, do you believe me? I'm, I'm your Lord. And he says that, um, believe in Lord. He said, what's, what's the proof? He says, what, how about if I was to cut you in half and then join you back again? And he'll have a whole crowd of people. So he said, go ahead then. So he points at him and he cuts him in half, two halves fall as, aside. And the Jal then walks between the two halves, comes back again, then points back at it. And the two halves join again and the man starts laughing. Wow. Do you know that they've got right now technology with a laser that can actually cut a limb without having any blood pouring out? He comes to a, to a Bedouin and he says, you're going to believe me, I'm your Lord. And he says, why should I believe you? I, I, you know, you're my Lord. Tell me how, why? He says, how about... He says this in front of a crowd. He says, how about if I was to bring your parents back alive? He says, really? Seriously? He says, okay. He says, bring them alive. You know, who would not want their parents to be alive? So he goes to their grave. The child goes to his grave. And then seemingly he brings his parents back up from their grave. And they say to their child, oh child, believe him. He is God. 
Now Rasulullah explained this. He said, he said, There will be two devils that will take the appearance of his parents. So his real parents are dead. But two, two, two devils have taken the appearance of two humans exactly like his parents and the devils speak out and the person believes it's his parents and therefore he believes. There's going to be a lot of trickery he will use. In fact, his name Dajjal means the one who is a master at lying and a master at trickery. He will fool people. He will walk. When he walks, he will have two rivers with him. Now we haven't, we have got nothing to, to understand this right now, but very soon, I'm sure in a few decades time, whenever the time's going to come, we're going to see, ah, we can understand how this is going to happen. He's going to have with him fire and he's going to have with him water. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, his fire is water and his water is fire. So he will tell people, look, jump into the water. Don't jump into the fire. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tells us, if you ever see Dajjal with his fire and water, he said, go and jump into the fire because his fire is going to be cool water. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talks about the Middle East and Sham. Now Sham is not just Syria. Sham is a lot larger than what current Syria is. If you want to understand what Sham is, you have to go and look at a map of the world pre-colonization of the, of, of pre-splitting of the Middle Eastern regions. So you have to look at a map of maybe 1900 or beyond that, will be before that to understand what Asham is because it includes Palestine. It includes, um, uh, you know, parts of Iraq. It includes Jordan inside there. It includes the whole of Syria inside there. So it's a large part. And the Prophet ﷺ talks about Asham, that a lot of activities are going to happen there. And in the end, what happens is, Dajjal has his influence and he, he has his base in that area. And Imam Mahdi that was out, he's trying to control the situation. He's got the Muslims with him, but he knows even he can't take on Dajjal. So what he does is he then gathers with the Muslims and he's just praying with them. And one particular fajr, what happens is Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi wa salatu wasalam, he comes from the sky, from the heavens. He will come down in, on a ladder holding you know, two angels' shoulders or basically being, be, being uh, um, escorted all the way from the heavens, all the way down to the Masjid of Damascus. And Prophet Sallallahu has even talked about the minaret from the side of the minaret that is going to come down. And what he does is he takes on the challenge of going for the Jal. As soon as he sees the Jal by Babul Lud, which is a place within Palestine, the Jal sees Isa alayhi salam and it starts to melt. The way salt melts in water, the Jal feels that his powers are going or his, whatever it means by melting. I don't know whether it's a physical melting or whether it's a metaphorical one means that he's feeling that, you know, his powers are about to finish. And he tries to escape Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam and the Jal then come to a clash. And what's mentioned in the hadith is that Isa alayhi salam is on a horse and the Jal is on another horse and both of them lift up in the air and try to kill each other and Isa alayhi salam kills the Jal before the Jal is able to kill Isa alayhi salam. Now again, as I said to you earlier, these could be planes. These could be planes. Allahu alam, we don't know. Or it could be the horse and cart edge. We don't know for sure. But as I said to you, I incline towards the, the technology we've got in the world today uh, some part of that seems to be a, an aid and a tool for what the Jal may use. If you made it to the end of the video, please like the video as a Sadka Jariya so more and more people can watch it and you will get swap for whoever watches it. We don't earn money from YouTube ads so you can support our channel from the link in the description so we can keep making new videos and you can subscribe to our channel. Jazakallah.